don't want no lies. I don't want no bad bullshit. All I want is the truth. We got David Lowe, who is making a records request at the Sheriff's Department in Clark County, Indiana. Uh, that's where we're at, guys. So we're going to get in here and we're going to make a request for a few different things. We're going to get camera footage of um, the the alleged rape incident, the cell that the women were in. We're going to get the hallway footage where the uh, supposedly where the key was hanging and see if we can see what happened in real time, like actually see the inmates get out and get it, um, and then what happened in the hallway afterwards. And we're also gonna get those chirp messages if they truly exist. So that's what Mr. Lowe's doing here. He's learning how to do open records. So say hi, David. What's up? Hopefully I don't get arrested. I mean, all you're doing is an open records request, buddy. I don't even like walking in here. I know. Well, fuck it. You know, it's an intimidating place for people who have been victimized by. You go ahead. Just go right to that window right there. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Just right there to that first window. Hey. I can help you later. Armor here? Yeah, I have a record request. Yes, ma'am. Leave it open. You can read it. I'm just a friend of his trying to yeah, he's my witness. help him get through it. Okay, this would actually be uh, somebody on admin. Let me give them a call real quick. I'm going to hand you that back. Well, all he's got to do is leave it. You just want to leave it for somebody? Yeah, and I mean, just, just give us a time and date it's receipt, and we'll just drop it off. Okay, let me stick it in an envelope, and I'll get it. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, we definitely need a, a copy and receipt copy to show that we dropped it. If you want, I can make a copy of it and then stamp with our receipt stamp. That's it? Okay. Yep. Does it have the date on it? Yeah, it'll have today's date. Okay. Right? Thank you. And there's the famous red Coke machine and blue Pepsi machine, which the inmates were using this drug drop off. We have people that are being opportunistic to make money, to deliver drugs into the facility, to prey on the weak. We're going to make it a priority to put you in jail. Investigators say he masterminded an elaborate plan involving code words, trash cans, and vending machines to get drugs inside the Clark County Jail. The 10 inmates who were on the inside already face additional charges. That after detectives who regularly read inmate communications saw a lot of talk too much, in fact, about construction. Maybe that wouldn't raise an eyebrow when you have multiple inmates talking about delivering windows to job sites and paints. Uh, there's not a whole lot of that, uh, I would assume, that was going on in the jail. That's why it would raise our suspicions. In those messages, the same words were being used over and over, like red and blue. It didn't take detectives long to figure out that blue meant a drop-off would be made near the Pepsi machine, and red meant a drop-off would be made near this Coke machine. And it was all in and around the jail. Turns out delivery of windows was meth. Dropping off paint was pills. Detectives cracked the code, intercepted a drop off in the jail lobby and shut the operation down. And I guess that would be the door that goes in to the jail from this side. I'm sure there's a garage on the other side for the officers when they make arrests. But apparently there was a bunch of inmates that was on the news for uh, smuggling drugs in here that were using these. Was it the trash cans they were hiding the drugs in? Do what? When they were smuggling the drugs in, was it the trash cans they were using? I'm not for sure, I wasn't here when it happened. I saw the news thing on it, I wondered how they were doing that. Yeah, I'm not for sure, I wasn't here yet when that happened. Yeah. Of course they don't wanna talk about this because Clark County, Indiana jail facility is probably one of the most advanced facilities in the nation 
in that they have been given some very serious equipment, very good equipment to be able to check for drugs, <laughs> more or less. Like they have scanners, body scanners, uh, all these things available to them, all these tools available to them to keep this from happening. Yet somehow these derelicts still allow this stuff to happen anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'll make sure that they get check, check right that. Gotcha. And, and don't fold your legal stuff up, buddy. All right, so here, I'll hold on to it. And, and fold uh, it for you. I would also like to schedule an appointment with IA. With who? I'm sorry. Internal Affairs. Right. Do you know who our internal affairs is? Randy Thomas. Okay. So that's the other thing we're doing. Surprise. David is uh, filing an internal affairs report. I think he's at lunch. He's at lunch from 12 to 1. Uh, I can either give you his number or I can take your information and pass it on to him when I give him this. And then we can give you a call back. How yeah. about you just make an appointment for another day? Do you can want you his do, number or do you want me to get your information? Uh, you can take down my information for him. Okay. Well, um, you probably want to do it in person, David. I would do it in well, person. Write everything down. Do you have his number on here too? Could you just um, could you just schedule an appointment for him? Like try to set an appointment. And we can come back at another time for it. So, so you want to come back to make the appointment? No, we want to make the appointment and then come to the appointment. Is it just me, or does anyone else find it totally ridiculous how this agency and all the people that work for Clark County have such a hard time understanding the concept of making an appointment? Okay, yeah, I'll get you the right information to get that done. You can't make that appointment from this office, like schedule it? I can't, I can't make an appointment for somebody For else. him? Okay. I didn't know if maybe you all shot emails to each other or something like that. And... I can pass on the message, but that's all. I can't make a one for you. Okay. Let's get his email. Is it on there? I've dealt with Mr. Thomas, and in the past, he's been a little sketchy, so I was recommending to my friend here that he'd probably want to use email so that there's liable verbiage to everything. I don't have his email, and I don't know what it is. I would have to get that from him. Okay. Because everybody's email is a little bit different. How about if he leaves you his phone number, okay, and then you get Randy's email from him, then call Mr. Lowe, and, and we can do that, for you. that way he can email and make an appointment together. Yeah. I think they're on a time statute as to when, how long before they can make the, if I understand the internal affairs reporting right, I right. think he's on a pretty limited time statute. It's been a while. Okay. So. Yeah. When I give him all this, I'll let him know that it's kind of time sensitive and it needs to. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, he gets back at one o'clock. As soon as he gets back, I'm going to take both of this to him and we'll get in touch with you. Okay. I appreciate it. You have a good day. You too. Thank, Thank you all. David did get his receipt from Mr. Thomas on the 30th of June. But major problem, Randy Thomas has still been ignoring Mr. Lowe's request to do an internal affairs report, which was also requested at the same date uh, before the 30th of June.